it's been over a year since I tried out the famous viral jelly gouache paints. And ever since, I haven't used them even once. But I think it's time we finally find out if these strangely fascinating paints are just a novelty gimmick or if they actually mean serious business. Spoiler alert, this experiment didn't go at all the way I imagined and as fate would have it, this would be one giant epic tale of disaster. But let's start at the beginning. Not really sure what I was expecting here. I guess it's exactly what you would expect after a year of not using these. Since this thing here, the lid, doesn't really seal or protect the paint, most of the colors have just dried up and I don't really know if I'll be able to use them at all actually. So I don't really know if there's gonna be a video, but maybe I can somehow reactivate them or at the very least get some paint from the bottom to use for at least one painting, but maybe I have to throw this thing away. I don't really know, but I mean, would be kind of unfortunate because no paint, uh, no video. So the good news is this kind of works. You can reactivate the paint, you can mix it, you can get it to a usable consistency again. But the bad news is, if you are as impatient as I am and uh, don't want to spend half an hour mixing your paints before you can get started, uh, this is kind of a nightmare. But at least I have usable paint and we have a video. Since I wanted to find out what these paints are actually capable of, I decided to try painting something a bit more complex and realistic. And when I went through my inspiration folder to find a reference for putting these paints to the test, I stumbled across a lovely little scene that was actually perfect for what I had in mind. A movie screen cap from Jurassic Park with an absolutely menacing looking T-Rex on the left and paleontologist extraordinaire Alan Grant wielding a torchlight like an absolute boss on the right. It's a nighttime scene with tons of detail, it has backlighting and there is rain, metal, gravel, etc. A perfect little scene that will let me test out all kinds of different things. My gouache painting process is very different from how I approach my other paintings. But it's also not rocket science. It's actually kinda underwhelming. I like to fill the painting surface with base colors using a big brush and loose and broad brush strokes. This allows me to quickly cover a large area and establish the overall color scheme of the painting. Then I paint in all the shadows, paying attention to the direction of the light and how the shadows interact with all the different shapes and forms. This way I can establish the overall color scheme of the painting, as well as create a sense of depth and dimension in the scene within a few minutes after getting started with the image. If you want to see the entire process of how I created this small realistic scene in real time, Head over to patreon.com where you can find a version that shows you the complete process in real time from start to finish. I have to say, I have used dozens of different gouache paints in my life. From wildly expensive ones where you think twice before squeezing it on the palette to gouache paints that are so cheap that it feels like you're essentially painting with liquid chalk. These jelly gouache paints though, I'm not gonna lie, they are surprisingly good. They are vibrant, they actually cover great and most importantly, at least in my opinion, they dry fairly evenly. I notice some colors tend to dry a bit glossy, which kinda destroys the beautiful character of gouache paint a bit, but it's definitely not so bad as to be a deal breaker. The palette, though, that's a different story. Let's be real, the biggest selling point of these paints and the thing that differentiates them from every other gouache paint out there is the open palette with all the cups that let you instantly access and see the paint. It looks different, it looks unusual, it looks intriguing, I get it, but within the first few minutes of painting, I once again noticed that this unique selling point might also be its biggest flaw. 
The problem is that when you pick up the paint, you constantly, constantly cross-contaminate it. And if there's one thing you never want to do, it's to make your paints dirty. You would have to clean your brush every time before you go back to pick some new paint to ensure you don't contaminate your colors. But that is not only impractical, but also almost impossible. Because then you not only have to constantly clean your brushes, but you also have to constantly switch your water. Because the water also gets dirty after rinsing your brush in it. And actually fairly quickly. The best way to minimize this problem is to take the paint out of the cups and onto a separate palette, where you can mix and dirty and go wild as much as you want without ruining all your colors. Of course, this is not a big deal. It's exactly how you usually would use your paints. And if you paint something realistic and a bit more sophisticated, you have to use a palette anyway, because you have to mix all kinds of different subtle colors and shades. But it does kind of defeat the purpose of the paints being in small, tiny cups in the first place. This was all my first impressions after painting for 10 to 20 minutes. After that, unfortunately, things took a very bad turn and it quickly went from bad to worse to utter disaster. You see, I made a very dumb beginner mistake. Mid-process, I started to get increasingly frustrated and I realized that I just didn't have the right brushes to paint this image to my satisfaction. I actually made a few very dumb mistakes and this wasn't nearly the worst, but this is where the downward spiral began. See, here's the thing. I don't paint with gouache and watercolor paints very often and my old worn out brushes just weren't up to the task. It was a huge pain in the ass to be honest because the brushes had lost all their springiness and fine tips and I couldn't paint any fine lines or create calligraphy or really control what I'm doing. If there's one thing you're looking for in a watercolor brush, it's exactly that. It's precision and control, but unfortunately, the brushes I had didn't provide either. I considered going out and getting new brushes mid-process, but the truth is, I was just too lazy and quite frankly, also a bit too stubborn. The bottom line is I just couldn't paint properly and the whole process was kind of a disaster. I was basically fighting my materials the entire time and that is one of the most frustrating experiences you can have on painting. Whether it's using the wrong type of paint, brushes that are worn out or a surface that is not suitable for your medium, fighting with materials can ruin your day in a heartbeat. But you know how it is. We don't back down and of course there was no turning back, so I kept painting and I tried to make the best of it. Luckily, gouache is a very forgiving medium and it's also very versatile, so I was able to fix and cheat my way to a half decent painting. Unlike watercolor, gouache is opaque and it can be layered to create depth and the illusion of detail. It dries almost on the spot and you can quickly paint over and make adjustments or Add details as you go. In a way, it's an ideal medium for creating highly detailed and realistic paintings. And it also plays really well with other mediums like pens, inks and pencils. Which, by the way, makes it almost a perfect medium for mixed media works. If you're curious about gouache paint and you maybe want to try it out yourself or get to know it a bit better, I can highly recommend you check out a class from today's video sponsor Skillshare. In particular, Leah Goran's class Beyond Watercolor, learn to paint with gouache. A super simple introduction to gouache paint and what you can do with it and a great starting point for everyone who's curious about trying it. If you want to check it out or any of the other thousands of classes on topics like writing, drawing or taking photos, use the code in the description or my personal code and since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 1000 to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. But I have to admit that I would be lying if I said that this whole experience didn't bother me. Not because the final painting turned out crappy or mediocre at best, but because I was really looking forward to putting these jelly paints to the test and maybe even discovering something that nobody has before. I was so focused on fighting my materials and trying to salvage the painting that I didn't get to explore their full potential and have some fun with them. But you live and learn, right? My brush choices and 
my lazy ass got the better of me this time. But it's also a good reminder that if something is worth doing, it's worth doing right. It's often tempting to cut corners or take shortcuts to save time and effort, but taking the time to do things right will often, almost always, lead to better results and more satisfaction in the end. Contrary to popular belief, materials are actually more important than people think. And they can make a real difference in how a finished painting looks. Sure, great artists will be able to make anything work and having a great idea and concept is essential, but it's just as important to have the right tools and materials to bring those ideas to life. Having a great idea is like having a winning lottery ticket, but without the right tools and materials, it's like trying to cash it in, but with a fake ID. The tools and materials you use play a crucial role in bringing your vision to life, which is also why it's so important to understand the specific characteristics and also limitations of all the tools and materials you use. It's all about finding the right balance between ideas, tools and materials to make an artwork the best it can be. Now, this was going to be the part where I admit defeat, accept the painting for what it is and, most importantly, give the final painting away as a part of a giveaway to turn this whole thing around and end on a more positive note. Well, the painting apparently had other plans. When I came back the other day to record some close-ups for the giveaway, I was surprised to find that I couldn't find the painting. I was 100% sure that I put it by the window over the heater, because that is where I often put finished pieces to let them dry and, well, as it turns out, I did put it there. Because after searching for an eternity, I of course eventually found it outside of my studio, lying in the rain, slowly waiting to dissolve and become one with nature again. I don't know how, I don't know when, but it must have found its way outside while the window was open for a second. And of course the painting is ruined. But in a way it feels like the fitting ending to the story. Don't you think? I'm a bit disappointed though because I really wanted to give the final painting away, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm still gonna give it away if you for whatever reason still want this, just for funsies or as a memento to this epic fail, just leave a like and a comment down below and the funniest comment with the most likes and upvotes will win this painting which apparently has a mind of its own. And I will announce the winner at the end of next week in a community post. So unfortunately, this whole thing turned into one epic giant big fail. So I'm just gonna do what every sensible person would do in my position. Which is of course double down and do it all over again. I got myself a new set of brushes and while I'm recording this, I actually already got started on another gouache painting. Even more complicated and even more realistic, talk about stubbornness. There's always a chance I will F it up in the last minute of course, but it looks like we will have a proper gouache painting video after all. So stay tuned for that. Thank you all for watching friends, see you in the next video and yeah, have a good one.